Who has the best New York style pizza dough recipe on YouTube? Let's find out. Here's the problem with recipes on the internet. Nobody vets them. I mean, there you are, finishing up what looked like an awesome recipe you found on the internet, and you're like, wait a minute, this doesn't look like the picture? Well, not today, pizza people, because I am going to personally test the top three search results for New York style pizza dough. And I'm gonna share with you which one is the best. Okay, a simple YouTube search for New York pizza dough, and here are the top results. We have three recipes from three very prominent YouTube cooking creators, Josh Wiseman, Vito Lacapello, and Brian Lagerstrom. I'll be creating each of the recipes to review side by side. First off, let's compare the three recipes and identify any major differences on paper. Vito and Brian are using a poolish for their recipes. Poolish is a pre-ferment or a starter usually made of a one-to-one -one ratio of water to flour. It helps to activate the yeast and develop deeper flavors in the dough. In terms of hydration, all three are within a few percentage points of each other. For reference, most New York style pizza dough recipes fall between 60 and 65% hydration. For flour, Josh and Brian are using all purpose and Vito is using a combo of Italian double zero and semolina. Josh's recipe has the shortest fermentation time of 27 hours. Vito is right behind him at 30 and Brian is using a 48 hour fermentation time on his recipe. Vito is using less yeast than the competition. He is also using 2% more salt than the other two. Vito is also the only competitor not adding any sugar to his dough. However, he does have a little honey and is poolish. Josh is not using any oil in his dough mix, which is interesting for the style, so we'll see how that turns out. All right, let's go ahead and make the dough. First, we'll make Josh's dough. In a container, add 617 grams of water at 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Whisk in 14 grams of yeast and let it sit for five minutes. To a large bowl, add 950 grams of flour, 19 grams of sea salt, and 25 grams of sugar. Mix that until incorporated. Add your water with your yeasties to your flour and mix by hand until you get a relatively smooth dough. About four minutes. Next, shape your dough into a ball. Generously grease a large bowl with olive oil and place your dough, cover with greased plastic wrap, and rise in the fridge overnight. Punch down your dough and place it onto a lightly floured egg surface. Divide it up into 300 gram pieces and roll them into tight balls. Go ahead and place into a grease container and cover and let ferment at room temperature for an additional three hours. Okay, let's make Vito's recipe. Vito starts off with a poolish of 300 grams of water and 300 grams of flour, five grams of dry yeast and five grams of honey. Mix it all up and cover, let it rest at room temperature for 24 hours. The next day, add 300 grams of water to a large bowl, mix in all of your poolish, then add 3 grams of yeast, 450 grams of double zero flour, 200 grams of semolina, and 30 grams of salt. Mix well, then rest for 30 minutes, work it a little bit more on the table, and then let it rest for another hour. Divide into four pizza balls and rest at room temperature for three hours until ready to cook. All right, Brian's recipe. We're gonna go ahead and do another poolish with 50 grams of water, a pinch of yeast, and 50 grams of flour. Stir to combine, cover, and let this sit at room temperature for 24 hours. Into a container, add 180 grams of warm water, all the ripe poolish, 10 grams of olive oil, five grams of yeast, and stir to combine. Set this to the side. Into the bowl of a food processor, add 315 grams all-purpose flour, eight grams of salt, and 10 grams of sugar. Slowly stream in wet ingredients, spin until well combined, plus an extra 15 seconds. Flip out onto a cutting board and give it 30 to 40 rolls with the palm of your hand for about 60 seconds. Tuck into a ball and put into an oiled bowl, then cover and allow it to rest at room temperature for 45 minutes. Flip out onto a surface and divide into two 300 gram portions. Round them into nice balls, place into a grease container and cover. Let these balls ferment in the fridge for an additional 24 hours. Okay, we've got a lot of balls now. Now to test them, we're gonna bake one of each dough recipe on a baking steel at 550 degrees on a home convection oven. We're also gonna be baking one of each at 750 degrees in the Rockbox pizza oven. 
For toppings, we're just doing a very simple red sauce of crushed San Marzano tomato, a little salt, and olive oil. Then we're gonna add a little shredded mozzarella to the home oven pizzas and a little fresh mozzarella to the Rockbox pizzas. All right, let's cook some pizza. pizza no flop flopless good cook on the undercarriage maybe just a hair overcooked otherwise the crust looks awesome good crunch good chew that's a damn fine new york style slice of pizza it's gonna be hard for the other two to beat this but we'll see all right this is brian's pizza out of the rock box not not a traditional New York style, obviously, but had the dough, so I thought it'd be a fun little side experiment. A little bit of flop, but not too bad. It's a lot lighter in the higher temperature oven. Fluffy, not as chewy. Still really good, though. All right, this is Josh's. Pretty good, no flop there, too. I. The bottom did cook a little better than Brian's. I didn't, I didn't burn it, or I didn't cook it. I didn't burn Brian's, but I cooked it maybe a little longer than I should. The crust doesn't look like it is as developed as Brian's, um, but it's got a good spring back. I mean, it look, looks pretty good, but Brian's looked like it had just a little bit more development, if that makes sense. hot okay it's really good solid slice of pizza anybody selling this on the streets of new york is going to do all right it doesn't have as much developed flavor as brian's did haven't tried Vito's yet but i think not having the poolish and the shorter fermentation we're gonna have to take a few points off for that just because it doesn't quite have that that depth of flavor that you want all right, this is Josh's in the rock box. So 700, 750 degree. Cooked real nice on the bottom. Still not a lot of flop. Really good. <clears throat> Cooking it with the open flame did add that extra flavor that I think this one needed. Um, this tastes a lot better than the one that we did in the home oven. Overall solid crust. All right, this is Vito's pizza in the conventional oven on the pizza stone. Uh, didn't really get any color on the bottom at all, which is kind of weird. The top's obviously cooked and done and got some good browning. I uh, don't know what that's about. The stone was to temperature, so kind of odd, but who knows? No flop. Forgot to mention there's no flop. It actually has really good flavor. Despite it looking a little underdone, it's fully cooked. And because of all that poolish we had earlier, the flavor is actually really good. Super crispy. And it's not bad. Still a good pizza. Still a good slice. It's just a little off for some reason. All right, this is Vito's Pizza Dough in the rock box, so the higher temperature oven. Uh, in my opinion, this might actually be the best looking pizza today. Which is odd because his pizza done in the conventional oven was actually probably the least attractive of all the pizzas today. So, who knows? That's super good. Go figure the Italian makes the dough that's best in the Neapolitan style. After trying all the pizzas, taking extensive notes, and then trying them all again, I can confidently say that Brian's recipe was the best. Although it took the longest to make, it had the best depth of flavor and the crispy yet chewy texture you want from an authentic New York slice. That said, all the recipes were quite good. Hey, thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.